Westmoreland Community Connections is a presentation of Citizens Fiber. Welcome to Westmoreland Community Connections, a look at issues and happenings on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. Here now is your host, Jennifer Mealy, Chief Communications Officer and Managing Director of Evangelization of the Diocese of Greensburg. Hello and welcome to Westmoreland Community Connections on WHJB. My name is Jennifer Mealy. I'm the Chief Communications Officer and Managing Director of Evangelization for the Diocese of Greensburg. And I'm so pleased today to have Westmoreland County Commissioner Doug Chu as my guest on Westmoreland Community Connections. Commissioner Chu, thank you so much for joining us. I know uh, I'm catching you in the middle of a nightmare season here with COVID-19, so much on your plate. How are you handling everything? Well, thanks for having me on today, Jennifer. I really appreciate it. Um, COVID-19 has definitely been a big challenge for um, myself and my colleagues here in 2020 especially for me being uh, this is my first year in uh, public office. Uh, so it's uh, a very unusual time to start a new career, a, a new pathway, learning about the general ins and outs of county government. And then on top of that, to have a pandemic, a presidential election, um, massive turnout to the election, a brand new voting machine, um, uh, new voting rules, et cetera. So it's been a rather interesting, challenging, but very, very fun uh, year. Well, we certainly give you a lot of credit. You have a lot on your shoulders along with your fellow commissioners. And I think you guys have done an excellent job in communicating. And in just a few minutes, we're going to be talking about some grant money that's available to both businesses and nonprofits uh, through a plan that Westmoreland County put together itself. So we're going to walk people through that. If you are someone who runs a nonprofit, if you are someone who runs a small business, you'll definitely want to stay tuned because we have some great information for you on how you can apply for some of that funding. But I always like to start off my interviews with asking uh, a little bit about you and how you got here. So can you tell the people of Westmoreland County where you grew up? what your education was like and what your career was, and then we'll get in a little bit to the politics part. Sure, that's always easy to talk about oneself, right? <laughs> yes. Um, so I am a Westmoreland County native. Uh, I've lived in Westmoreland County from being born at Westmoreland Hospital through today. I only skipped out for four years to neighboring Pittsburgh whenever I got my bachelor's degree. Um, I grew up in Hempfield Township, uh, but I spent a lot of time on my family's farm in the summer uh, helping out. And um, I really enjoyed and learned a lot about nature and uh, dairy farming and uh, the enjoyment of having fresh cow's milk for your cereal and coffee every morning. Uh, and so that's, that's still, I think, a very strong part of who I am and the businesses that I try to support locally. Um, graduated I graduated from, from Hemfield High School in 1988. Uh, I went directly to the University of Pittsburgh and I majored in biochemistry and biophysics uh, there, uh, minoring in chemistry and some of the other sciences. That was probably the most enjoyable time of my life. It was uh, very fun to learn from people that had really set the stage for the biological revolution that we are in today. Um, you know, before you and I were born, we had a physics revolution, a chemical revolution, and in our lifetime, we're seeing this biological revolution, and it has really been very, very exciting. Um, I enjoyed the fact that some semesters we would learn something and the following semester we would find out that some of the information had been misinterpreted and new experiments led science down a completely different pathway. Um, and, and so that, you know, being able to live through that time where, you know, biology, biochemistry was changing so rapidly uh, was just mesmerizing. And um, I really look back at that time as a very formative time that helped me see and be able to evaluate things independently because there were things we studied one year that were 
completely disproven uh, the following year. Um, you know, PCR, uh, the polymerase chain reaction was just coming into play. The use of DNA in crime labs were just coming into play. Um, you know, a lot of what we know today in terms of personalized medicine, the experiments that started that happened in 88 through 92 while I was at Pitt getting my undergraduate degree. Um, and so I've always found that to be very, very exciting. And um, I've had the pleasure of being taught by people that have gone on to become uh, members of the National Academy of the Sciences who have uh, really published um, intriguing early work that has led to many of the advances today. And I'm happy to be able to call them friends and colleagues. I started out at Pitt thinking that I was destined to go in healthcare, uh, to go down that route. But I love the day-to-day -day thrill of scientific investigation so much that I changed course. And after I graduated, I went into research and teaching um, and never looked back. I just found that to be so exciting to uh, be on the frontiers of science and to be teaching it on a daily basis um, I, I, I just, uh, I, I don't think I could talk superlative, superlatively enough about those experiences. Um, I did ultimately move into research in the School of Medicine. Um, I worked in surgery for about eight years and I worked in rheumatology for about eight years. Uh, the immune system had uh, really fascinated me. And so when I left teaching, uh, that's where I went was to pursue experiments and science in immunology. Um, in 2018, my wife and I decided that it was time to quit driving to Pittsburgh. And so I shifted focus and retired from Pitt. Um, the opportunity arose whenever Chuck Anderson retired from being a Westmoreland County commissioner and, uh, I ran for office in 2019, along with seven or eight other Republicans, and uh, Commissioner Curtis and myself ultimately became the successful two that went on to return a Republican majority to the Westmoreland County Courthouse um, in 2020. Quite a career so, change, you have to admit. Quite a career change. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I never thought that I would talk or think about science as much as I did for the first 30 years of my life until COVID hit in 20, you know, in March of 2020. And, um, you know, all of a sudden we were talking science and healthcare and um, disease and disease transmission on a, on a regular daily basis. It's kind of funny how life comes full circle at times. Full circle. And you certainly have the background um, that you need to deal with something like this. So um, in one of your last statements, you talked about, you know, moving into the courthouse. A lot of changes had to be made in the workplace of the courthouse. It's the county seat, you know, Greensburg, uh, the county seat of Westmoreland, uh, lots of business being done in and around the courthouse. And so what were some of the first changes that were made to the courthouse and what could people expect if they have to visit there? Well, the first change whenever March was ending and nobody was really sure of any specifics related to this virus, the biggest change was we moved to um, only having appointments in the courthouse and uh, very little business was conducted. The PA Supreme Court shut down the courts. Uh, that eliminated a lot of that traffic. Um, and for the most part, the only thing that was still occurring on a regular basis were people getting gun permits mm -hmm. and people selling real estate. Mm -hmm. A lot of the other offices were furloughed because the public wasn't uh, coming in. Mm -hmm. But we used that time very wisely. Uh, we used it um, to save money in the county budget. We also utilized it to upgrade the places where the public interacts mm -hmm. with the workers in the courthouse. 
And so, for example, if you now go to the prothonotary's office, you would see as you're filing your paperwork that there are screens up so that if you cough or sneeze, that aerosol doesn't travel through to the person on the other side of the desk. Much like we've had sneeze screens or uh, cough screens at buffet lines for years, uh, we now have them at every office in the courthouse uh, to help protect our workers. And that's probably something good that we should have had all along. It actually restricts the ability of um, somebody with uh, maybe nefarious intent from jumping over a counter mm -hmm. and harming somebody that way. So really, they do serve a variety of purposes. And I feel better about our staff having that safety not just from aerosol out of somebody's mouth, but also from people being able to jump that counter or reach across it and strangle them or um, anything of that nature. So that's, that's the biggest thing that we've had to do on county property is set up that level of protection. I did notice that. I actually brought my ballot to the courthouse to vote uh, on election day. And I brought my children with me, my little girls, so that they could see, you know, all the things that were happening at the courthouse. They were very kind. Everyone had their mask on. The park police, you know, escorted us through the uh, metal detectors and they were very, you know, good to the children. Of course, we all had our masks on as well. And, um, you know, it just took one second to drop off the ballot, but they were kind enough to take us back into a courtroom to see the changes that had happened in the courtrooms too from a time when I was a reporter covering it until now. And you could see those sort of spit screens as we call them, you know, uh, in different places. And you could see how the changes were made even where they're keeping the jury box now versus spreading everyone out. So it was very interesting to see all of the dynamics and operational changes that have to be made to a courthouse. And somehow that all fell on, on you and your colleagues. So good job on all of that. That certainly couldn't have been easy. So one of the things that we're talking about today, too, is um, the county commissioners decided to create a grant program uh, to move people forward for those small businesses and nonprofits who were impacted by COVID-19. Um, why don't you give us a, an overview right now of the CARES program? So the CARES program, that acronym actually comes from the law that established the funding source from the federal government. And so the US Congress funded the CARES program nationally through the US Treasury. And then the US Treasury developed algorithms that distributed that money to each state. And then the state distributed that money down to counties and other resources. Uh, Westmoreland County was fortunate to receive about $31.5 million in that earmark. And that sounds like a rather large sum of money, but in the big scheme of things, when you're talking about um, protecting people from COVID, uh, COVID testing and things of that nature, the um, healthcare workers at the manor, uh, the park police, um, pandemic pay, et cetera, that $31.5 million can go very quickly. And so my colleagues were really, even from day one, faced with tough decisions on where to earmark um, and spend that money to benefit the greatest number of people within Westmoreland County. We picked a couple programs that really targeted the businesses affected the most by the pandemic, and that is our small businesses. Our small businesses that might have only been able to sell one or two products because that's how they had already always been established, they weren't in the same place as a big box store that if they sold produce could also sell clothes, tires, and a whole bunch of other things in between. Um, and so our goal was to really help those small businesses stay alive. And so one program that we established was to provide up to $25,000 of grant money free of charge 
that would help that small business um, operate based w without uh, having the revenue loss that they saw by not having customers in their store or Absolutely. by having the state wrongly close down certain sectors of the economy and not allow them to open. And so um, there was about 400 businesses so far that we have been able to fund. Um, many of them received up to $25,000, but there were a few that only had smaller losses and, and did receive less than that full amount. And we now have a second round that's open for applications, uh, looking to help businesses that might not have heard about this whenever the first round uh, came about. And we're doing similar programs with nonprofit uh, institutes. And so if you have a nonprofit that helps people in Westmoreland County, the nonprofit is located in Westmoreland County, and you were unable to hold fundraisers or galas in support of your nonprofit, we are also offering that same $25,000 to each nonprofit that suffered losses in their revenue for the 2020 year. Um, and this is really new. Uh, this only was put out by the county in the last couple of days, right before Thanksgiving. And that is a special track of money for fire departments. Um, we absolutely need to have our first responders. I don't think anybody in Westmoreland County could disagree with that statement. We rely on them for car accidents, for fires, for saving uh, children and adults if the house that you're living in catches on fire. And we need those departments to remain with us. Many of those departments are really, really struggling because their annual summer festival or their annual spaghetti dinner or their major fish fries throughout all of Lent were unable to be had. Um, that place is a big, big burden on those volunteers to maintain equipment, to maintain their training, to maintain their protective outfits and gears, none of which are cheap um, or inexpensive items. And so we decided that even if it meant we would have to dip a little bit into the general fund of the county, that we're making available $25,000 for each fire company um, to, to help them through this time as well. The state and the federal government limited nonprofits to 501c3s. Some of our fire companies are 501c4s. We don't want anybody to be kept out of this. And so we are willing to utilize regular general county funds to help those 501c4 um, fire companies that exist. This is Outstanding Information. You're listening to Westmoreland Community Connections on WHJB. This is Westmoreland Community Connections on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. If you have a suggestion for a topic or if your nonprofit organization would like to be featured on this program, call us during regular business hours at 724-216-1200. Westmoreland Community Connections is a presentation of Citizens Fiber. Welcome back to Westmoreland Community Connections on WHJB. I have a special guest with me today. It's Westmoreland County Commissioner Doug Chu. He's doing a great job today talking about the Westmoreland CARES Act and all of the funds available to help nonprofits, small businesses, and most recently fire departments in Westmoreland County. Now is really an opportunity for the county to connect with these small businesses, these organizations who are suffering because of COVID-19. Uh, I think it's a great program and it's very interesting to hear how it's being administered. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, Commissioner Chu, if I am a small business or if I am a fire chief or if uh, I, I do run a nonprofit, how can they reach out and start to get involved and learn more about receiving these funds? Sure, absolutely. That's a great question. Um, if people are inclined to work on it themselves, they can go to the county website which is co 
westmoreland.pa.us. And on that front splash page at the top, there is a link with pictures that would take these uh, entities to the CARES Act um, applications that we have posted online. If somebody would like to have an, a, little, a little bit of additional help, my office has helped any business or nonprofit that has come to them. And um, our direct phone number is 724-830-3102. We're more than happy to connect people with the answers to their questions, the application itself, or even help them complete everything um, in, in the right way in order to be considered for that funding. The only thing, of course, we can't do is we can't turn it in for that business or um, nonprofit or fire company. They would have to actually take it in themselves to um, make the final signature. But we are all willing to help in any way that we can to get this information as well as this money out into the community where it's so desperately needed. Yeah, I was reading a little bit about uh, the first round of funding and you guys reviewed it really quickly. I mean, there, there was not a six month lag here, right? I mean, you, you try to process these applications as quickly as possible. How, can you talk a little bit about that process? Sure. Um, the initial review really for qualifications and double checking the math was performed by the Economic Growth Connection, mm -hmm. uh, which is in a neighboring building, building to the Westmoreland County Courthouse. They have a tremendous amount of experience working with all types of grants and the state actually tapped them to be the source of administration for a couple of the other COVID programs that existed. And so their experience and their technology in-house was the right match for what we needed in Westmoreland County. So they do the initial screen and then present every application to us um, with the math and the uh, qualifications all double checked and then the three commissioners sat in a room and discussed every single application. Uh, I, I wanna say we spent about 10 to 12 hours on the business ones alone and another six to eight hours on the nonprofits. There weren't as many of those in the first round. And it was a very collegial uh, environment. Uh, all three commissioners, myself and my colleagues, Commissioner Curtis and Sorelli, uh, all sat and had very open discussions about uh, the business applications that were in front of us. Well, that's pretty impressive because that's 400, uh, you know, 400 applications that you had to review. So I would imagine that took a tremendous amount of time. So I guess you guys are carving out time in your schedule so that you could all meet and work through this process. Correct. And we're getting ready to actually start our next round of review for the applications that have started coming in for this second round. Um, so within the next few days, we should start establishing some appointments in the calendar to, uh, to review these. It Thank isn't you. easy, but we want to make sure that the money gets out there and is available um, for everybody to, to keep the economy in Westmoreland County moving forward. You're listening to WHJB, and I'm interviewing today Westmoreland County Commissioner Doug Chu. He's talking about the Westmoreland CARES Act and the grants and funds available to help nonprofits, small businesses, and fire departments in Westmoreland County. So um, already in round one, 400 businesses and nonprofits assisted. That's a tremendous amount. Have you gotten some good feedback from people? You know, have, have they talked to you and said, wow, this saved my business, this saved me from having to close? We have, I, um, I was not sure what to expect. We did the business applications as pickups. Mm -hmm. um, so you could come to the courthouse, sign your paperwork and pick up the check right there and then um, on the same day so that it was a one-stop shop. I was actually touched by the number of people that started to cry and would make comments like another week and I'm not sure where we would have been. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many small businesses that I learned about 
over the last several months that no box store, no big store, no national chain can take the place of. You know, one example are some of these businesses that rent materials for our summer carnivals. Mm -hmm. So fun services, which you probably recognize their red and white Mm -hmm. carnival tents because a lot of our local Roman Catholic churches utilize them Mm -hmm. for their summer festivals. Mm -hmm. That's one of the very few businesses in Westmoreland County that offers that type of service. It's not replicated in any of the other big box store businesses. And with nothing being able to take place in 2020, they were in serious uh, situation. They were most likely not going to continue into 2021. I couldn't imagine what our churches would do or what our fire departments would do if they lost that business. And so uh, I was, uh, you know, very happy that we were able to help them weather the storm of 2020 so that they're available for us in 2021 whenever we return to normal and we're able to have those festivals, carnivals, and other events again. I'll tell you, a gathering and that lack of socialization is, you know, really uh, that halo effect of COVID-19 and you know, I guess you don't even think about things like that. The tent rental places, the popcorn machines, you know, all of those things that would normally be in full swing in the summer. Um, I think a lot of that has impacted, as you said, fire departments, but also nonprofits who rely on that revenue from their gala, from their uh, charity fundraiser, you know, and it's all about gathering. So I'm sure you, you had many grateful nonprofits as well. Yes. Um, I actually had COVID myself and my family at the time when the nonprofits were picking up. So I don't have really much experience or personal interaction with them like I did with the small businesses. Uh, But we've gotten plenty of emails and thank you notes um, as a result. And it's, it's just a pleasure to read how you've been able to help or impact um, the community in that way. Well, you guys have definitely put the time and effort in uh, to administering this program uh, as quickly and efficiently as possible. I loved learning about it today. I thought it was so interesting. So one more time before we go, uh, if you are a small business, a nonprofit, or a fire department in Westmoreland County, and you are looking for some COVID relief assistance through the Westmoreland CARES Act, Can you tell people again how they can connect with the county to do that? Absolutely. The website for the county on that front page is a direct link to the process. It's co.westmoreland.pa.us. Or you're welcome to call my office and we can connect you with the necessary paperwork via fax, phone, email, or postal mail. And our office number is 724-830-3102. Westmoreland County Commissioner Doug Chu had a great report for us today. Uh, More than 400 businesses helped in just round one after receiving $31.5 million in grant funds uh, to assist with that COVID-19 relief. Um, up to $25,000 also available to small businesses, to nonprofits, and to fire departments. It's just a matter of digging in, visiting the website, understanding what numbers they need and how to do that. Uh, He also educated us that our friends from the Economic Growth Connection are doing the initial review of applications to make sure the numbers work. And then the county commissioners themselves are going through every single application to have this money administered as quickly as possible. Commissioner Chu, uh, this is quite a a career change from uh, being a scientist, but we're we're sure glad you made it. Uh, You and your colleagues, uh, we're very glad that we have you uh, during this difficult time. And thanks for looking out for our county. Thanks for everything you do. Thank you. I really appreciate your time today and everything that WHG I'm sorry, WHJB does. No problem. Hey, you're listening to WHJB Westmoreland Community Connections. Thanks for joining us. 
This has been Westmoreland Community Connections, a look at issues and happenings in and around Westmoreland County. Join us again next week on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. Westmoreland Community Connections is a presentation of Citizens Fiber.